Hello! This is a bit of an impromptu video. I was just preparing for Febrilage and realized that maybe this is something that you guys would be interested in. Febrilage is a month-long challenge through February, February Collage Challenge. Anyone can participate. I have so many people being like, oh, I wish I could participate. No, no. Everyone can participate. All you have to do is make a piece for that day and then hashtag it with Febrilage and then if they come across it, they will repost it to their page and I just found that this was a great way to meet other collage artists, find a community and also get promoted to other collage pages. We're given a prompt every single day and your challenge is to make uh, as many pieces as you can uh, throughout it. You can pick a couple prompts to do or if you're crazy like me last year, I actually did every single one through every single day of February. It was like a full-time job, it was insane. So when I prepare for Fabrilage, it's not like a normal person. I go a little crazy and I try to make piles of everything that I can. So I'm just gonna take you through the process and what that looks like. So for this year, these are all the prompts. Uh, I usually take a look at this and this is the page that it'll be posted on. When I knew the prompts were coming, I got super excited. I went through my papers, I started cutting out some people. I have some that I've really wanted to use for a long time, like this one that I've just put to the side and hopefully I'll be able to use this for one of the 28 days. I start by writing down all the prompts onto a paper. This way I can have them in front of me and I just prompt the book up. I'm gonna keep this to the side while I look through a bunch of papers and try to make piles for each and every one of these. So this is the start of my setup. This way I can see literally all the prompts right there. I'm going to be pulling out pieces of paper. I've already cut these out from something else that I never used, so I'm just putting those to the side and seeing if I can link those to something in here. I'm then going to go through these two piles of paper. These are ones that I've pulled to the side and had there for a while, ones that I really want to use. So I'm going to start by flipping through those, see if they catch my eye for any of the things, and if they do, then we'll cut them out. So my next step is just to get a whole whack load of piles of stuff and try to find ones that I want to use as the base piece, so the piece that inspires me. These are what I'm thinking I'll put all the materials in. We'll see, they're not huge, so everything might not fit, but uh, yeah, I figured that I could put like the small cutout pieces, put a sticky note on top of it. Like for example, the first one is fish, so maybe if I find any pictures of fish, they'll go in here. And then I'll put that in a binder and hopefully that helps me get somewhere. Or the other way that I did last year was just literally having piles like this and then I stacked like that and then that again so that it was like one big pile uh, with sticky notes through it. Just trying to figure out what's best. There's a prompt here for Frankenstein. So um, this could be really interesting to have as like the border. I know Frankenstein's technically supposed to be the scientist, but I think in this case, they're trying to make you think outside the box. And Frankenstein, I could definitely picture like a bunch of body parts kind of cut up. So I had and, and stuck together to be like one new person in this space. So I'm gonna pull that to the side. And I think that this might work too, just because I have like its eye worst case uh, to add to like the little body. And I think that Frankenstein will be a really interesting piece to do because I can then uh, like use pieces from the previous prompts and maybe the, like the back of them have like arms that are cut out just because I've cut out certain pieces. So that's where I've landed on that. This one also could be interesting as a Frankenstein. I could cut up the face because there's multiple images. That worked out well. And maybe I'll bring in this wolf. I don't know about this one. There's one called Tide. It would be interesting to be like, call it Tongue Tide, if I could figure out how to make this work. I don't think so though. I got these two women, I've always liked them. Uh, maybe they become Frankenstein if I cut them up together, because they look like one body. This large eye. Although it doesn't really match up with anything, it's kind of interesting. Like there's one called Journey, which could be really cool out the eye. And then there's one called Listen, which I think could be really interesting with this. These are just photos that I really liked. They're from um, Vogue. It's, it's a newer issue, but they took the older pictures. So this is 1966 and 1949. I just love these photos, even though they're from new <laughs> magazines, but they're old, old reprints. There's one called Wings. So I could pull this to the side just cause it has basically like a chicken hat. <laughs> this has wings on it. I've always liked this photo, but I just haven't been able to use it for anything. Um, I 
think it's just such, such a beautiful photo in the first place. Oh yeah, and I also just pulled these out because I thought that they would work well for multiple things. Like this one's smile, there's one called photograph. This one's like them taking a photo of a man slapping her butt. Um, and this one, there's one called ghost and this guy looks like he's like dead on the stairs. I was just kind of intrigued by that. So I'm gonna put these to the side as well as potential uses. I think this photo is funny if we use it for listen potentially because they look like they're talking into his ear even though they're kissing his cheek. I think that would be kind of interesting. The thing about Febrilage is that it is a marathon. Making art for 28 days straight is insane just because life gets in the way and it's way easier if some of the pieces at least are already cut out. It's gonna just save so much time and make it possible to even do this. I find Febrilage to be a very fulfilling thing to do. It definitely gives me a lot of artistic confidence. Creating one piece a day is not easy, let alone following prompts when you're using vintage magazines are extremely difficult because you can't just head to an encyclopedia and find exactly what I'm looking for picture-wise. Being an artist can be really lonely and doing it a challenge where you're really involved with other people and meeting new people and commenting and learning so much uh, is just such an amazing way to gain experience in the artistic world. Doing collage is an extremely tedious task and a lot of the time I collage for about eight hours in a row just because that's how you get in the flow and make a lot of really interesting pieces in one go. Yeah, but it would be nice to be around people so I think that Febrilage is the perfect happy medium. I wanted to stop to open this slower. I have no idea what this is. It was just tucked in the pile of magazines and it looks like art prints. Wow. Wow, these are beautiful. And they're from the National Gallery of Canada, which is kind of cool. So let's put these to the side. I've taken some time and cut out some of the pieces that I really think that I'll use. So there's one prompt called Dinosaur and I think this is so cute, but I also cut out like a Komodo dragon. I found this for evolution. So that's my start for Dinosaur. So I'll put those aside for that little pile. But things like this person and these that don't really actually go into a category, I just have a folder for. I think I'm just going to throw them all into here and hopefully have them all cut out and every day I can open this, take a look in and grab the things that I think might work for a lot of different ones. That way I don't really get stuck up on something. I thought this one would be good for photograph. Uh, I could do like different pieces or cut this out. I'm not sure yet. So that's one for that. Um, there's one called fish. And I found these two. I've always wanted to do something with these, but I just didn't know how. So I definitely want to try to use these this year. Um, I just loved this photo. I thought it was so pretty. So grabbing this to add to the random pile. And I found these awesome legs that I really liked. I don't know, that could be really something cool. I like how this guy's just kind of popping out. So these are all ones that I'm just going to put into this pile of randomness, I'm going to call it. And maybe while I'm doing this, I'll see something that I like and add it to it. Like maybe I want, I was kind of playing around with this. Like I love the <laughs> lizard grabbing the tub or, you know, s someone. And then we're quickly just gonna go through. I really wanna put this picture on top of this, but it doesn't really go for any of the themes. Um, unless I wanna do like geometric or something, cause it has the squares, but it's a little bit lame. So. We'll see, and there's a shoe prompt, so actually I'll put this to the side for shoes. I think this one was really cool. Yeah, so we're just gonna quickly run through everything.
This is a pretty wild way to do it and it's not the normal way that I'm sure other people do it, but I find that being super organized actually limits creativity. I'd rather have some things come up that are spontaneous that I didn't expect to have happen because that's where the real creativity happens. Here's a look at the halfway point. So I still have all of these ones to find things for, or as I said, I'm not really keen to do all of them this year. So this might be just what I do, um, making half of them. I am a little bit worried because there is like a substantial like three or four days in a row where there isn't one, um, but maybe I'll find some things for that one. So as I mentioned, I did every single day of February Lodge last year. I just wanted to show some of those pieces really fast because they're pretty and I think that they're pretty great for uh, how little amount of time I had to do them. Now I'm really hoping that this inspired you to take place for February Lodge. I think that everyone should do it, honestly. It's like Inktober or anything else. They're just a great way to connect with the artist community. And now that you're watching this before the challenge starts, fingers crossed, you can definitely participate as well. I definitely like to prepare for it. It's not mandatory by any means, but it does make things a little bit easier since the prompts are so specific sometimes. Even if you don't want to post them anywhere or show people them, I think it is an amazing way to test your art. There is nothing better than doing a 28 day challenge for someone who has never collaged before. It'll definitely help you find a collaging style or you can just experiment every single day with a different technique. I just want to emphasize as well that literally anyone can participate. I mean like anyone, if you have a magazine in your house, go grab it, just cut some things out, have some fun with it. Maybe only if you do one, it's just a really fun way to get involved with something. As always, I hope you really enjoyed this video and I really hope that you participate in Februlage. Just want to quickly plug my Instagram as well that you guys can definitely follow along. It's at Flanzella. Februlage is hard, I'm not gonna lie, so I would love your guys' support. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. I'm posting every Saturday and we have a super exciting month coming up with Februlage just around the corner.